Hello, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to continue talking about the history of the financial market and in one very important aspect, whether or not the market is efficient. Um, the finance term for that is called the efficient market hypothesis. The two questions that we want to address in this lecture is whether or not the market is efficient and also why is market efficiency important? Why do we pay attention to it? So first, let's take a look at what happens when markets are indeed efficient. So in efficient capital markets, stock prices will be fairly priced. So fair or fairly, this is a very important word here. Um, the other is the concept of equilibrium. Um, the concept of equilibrium we drew from basic economics. So that means that when supply equals demand and there's a buyer for every single seller in the stock market. When that happens, the price that is revealed at the equilibrium point are fairly priced. Now that you have some concepts between risk and return, we can have a better understanding of what do we mean by fair. So fair in this context means that the return you will get um, by investing in the stock is consistent with the risk of the stock. The second characteristic of an efficient capital market is that the price that is at the equilibrium price reflects all available information. So the information obviously inform both the future prospect, the future return with the stock as well as the risk. And this is where the concept and the definition of, of efficient market becomes a little bit trickier because the term information is a very general term. So we need to make it a little bit more specific. So over, over time, uh, what scholars in finance have um, narrowed down to is three definitions of information. The first is a form of efficiency that we call weak form efficient, and that is consistent with the stock prices reflecting all historic market information. So what do we mean by that is if the, if the stock market is weak form efficient, then the prices in that market will have reflected all historic market information. Market information here means just stock prices and trading volumes. So those are very limited set of information. If the market is, if the prices reflect more than that, then we move to the second form of efficiency, which is the semi-strong form efficiency. In the semi-strong form efficiency, the prices in the stock market reflects all publicly available information. So publicly here is very important. Publicly available does not mean that they are free. It just means that anyone who has the means can purchase them. So uh, publicly available information includes um, stock analysis published by analysts, uh, stock price uh, or stock information that is uh, analyst report that is published in financial publications such as the Wall Street Journal or Barron's. So anything that is available to the public, meaning anyone who has the means to purchase it. So this includes uh, electronic subscriptions, such as information you can get through the Bloomberg terminal. So any information that is available, whether for free or for sale, would be reflected in the stock price. And if the market, if the prices indeed reflect those information, we'll conclude that the market exhibits a semi-strong form efficiency. And then the last form of efficiency is called the strong form efficiency. And that will include all available information. So that will include private information, proprietary information. So if the market prices reflect all information, we will conclude that the stock market exhibits a strong form efficiency. So what are the different, what are the implications of the different forms of efficiency. Uh, first, if the markets are efficient, then you should not be able to earn an abnormal return using information, available information. So what we mean by that is, take an example, if the market is strong form efficient, so that, that's the most extreme case, then no one, whatever information you have, will not enable you to earn an abnormal return. 
um, we're going to spend some time looking at which form, uh, academics in their studies have identified which form of efficiency the market appear to be demonstrating at this point in time. However, even if the market is efficient, it does not mean that investors cannot earn return. It just means that investors will earn a return that is consistent with the risk of the stock. So this is the most important takeaway. We, regardless of the form of efficiency that the market exhibits, investor will be able to earn return that is consistent with the risk of the stock. Which form of efficiency the market currently exhibits will imply that whether or not there are opportunities to earn abnormal return over and above the risk of the stock based on the information that you have access to. So let's take a take the weak form efficiency in a little bit more depth. We mentioned that weak form efficiency implies that information or past market information. So that means uh, trading prices, trading volume, all those are stock market information. If the market exhibits weak form efficiency, the implication is that technical analysis which is based on strictly just price and trading volume will not lead to abnormal return. So technical analysis, you may have heard terms about the, the stock market or stock price is trending and is breaking a uh, certain peak level. Those are all weak form, uh, those are all technical analysis. So technical analysis look at the price chart and the volume chart and to, and to try to guess where the, where the stock price will go next based on the past prices and past trading volume information. So if the market exhibits weak form efficiency, then technical analysis will not enable investors to earn any abnormal return. Currently, the evidence that we have collected suggested that markets are generally weak form efficient. So what that means is most of the time technical analysis will not work. Now there are always new research and the analysis always change over time. So for example, uh, more recent analysis have been looking at very, very high frequency data. So these are transactional data. Um, looking at, at a nanosecond basis and some there are some evidence that you might be able to earn abnormal return using very very high frequency data but the evidence on that is still mixed because there is an element of legality mixed in with high frequency trading so whether or not high frequency traders are actually illegally using information or unethically using information that um, that they are supposed to oblige to follow. So if you are working for a brokerage firm, a brokerage company is supposed to, ex uh, to execute a client's order at the best price before they execute the house's uh, proprietary trade. And sometimes that information may have gotten um, uh, there, there are some cases where they show that trading company, uh, tr uh, brokerage firms are actually not following this ethical rule. So there is still the, the gray area of ethics, legality, and whether or not Indian people were using information fairly to earn an abnormal return. So informa using information illegally or unethically to earn an abnormal return, that is a that's a regulatory problem, not so much that the market is inefficient. So the, uh, in the past, most empirical evidence showed that markets are not, uh, are generally weak form efficient. Um, the latest um, trend of high frequency trading has an element of um, ethical violation, if not illegal um, trading going on. So the, the verdict is still out. Next, let's take a look at the semi-strong form efficiency. In this case, the information set that we are working with are all information that is publicly available. So we already mentioned that it is publicly available does not mean free. It can be both 
free and subscription based or um, it may be costly and this can include anything from trading information so past prices past volume so the publicly available information set includes all the historic market data set as well in addition to that um, annual report press releases again uh, analyst report so both primary sources from the company themselves or secondary sources which include analysts that have looked at um, those data so what are the implications for investors if the market exhibits semi-strong form efficiency one of the very important implications is that fundamental analysis will not generate abnormal return so fundamental analysis means next let's take a look at a semi-strong form efficiency when we are evaluating whether or not the capital markets are semi-strong form efficient the information set we are looking at uh, include all publicly available information and we have already mentioned in the la uh, in the last um, slides that publicly available information includes both free and for subscription um, type information. So first of all, it's very important to remember that publicly available information includes trading information. So this means past prices and also volume. So or past trading volume. So in other words, everything that we consider historic market information is included in the publicly available information as well. In addition to that, any financial data such as annual report, press releases, uh, any information that comes directly from the companies, or and in addition to that, any derivative um, information such as analyst report where an analyst will review the annual report and new product development and they write up those reports. Those may be, may be for sale and some of them may be quite expensive. For example, uh, some analysts will charge a annual subscription fee of $1,000 per year and that is still considered publicly available information because anybody can buy it. So when we evaluate market uh, capital market efficiency f using publicly available information, what are the implications for investors? So for individual investors, what we wanted to find out is if indeed the capital market exhibits semi-strong form efficiency, what should an investor do? So the implication of the semi-strong form efficiency is that if the market does indeed exhibit semi-strong form efficiency, fundamental analysis will not lead to abnormal return. And fundamental analysis is a very important part of stock anal analysis. So fundamental analysis a lot, uh, includes um, discounted cash flow analysis, um, the models that we examine, stock pricing model, uh, all those are part of fundamental analysis. Something very important to remember is that it does not mean that those models are invalid. Those models can be totally valid. However, because the market is competitive and because it exhibits semi-strong form efficiency, uh, the prices that you can buy a stock at has already reflected all those information. So if you do perform fundamental analysis and the market exhibits semi-strong form efficiency, the price, the value that you come up with based on fundamental analysis should actually equal to the current trading price of the stock. So the main question then is if you do indeed perform the analysis and you find that the value you computed is different from the current trading price, there are two possibilities. One is that the market is incorrect and therefore you have an opportunity to earn abnormal return or that the market is correct, the market price is correct and you have made a mistake in your calculation. So which one is it? Uh, this is actually one of the most um, highly researched area in finance and empirical evidence currently is mixed. For the majority of the analysis, and we'll talk about how they do this type of analysis in a minute, um, 
we find that in general, if you have if your day job is not a stock analyst or portfolio manager, uh, a part time investor is very difficult to earn abnormal abnormal returns through fundamental analysis. However, there is some evidence that professional investors are able to earn a small abnormal return using fundamental analysis and the abnormal return basically equals to their search cost. So remember that um, obtaining this information is not free. They may be publicly available, but they are not free and also provides an, an, a return uh, for the human capital, meaning they're earning their salary uh, or the commission for these professional investors. So those are the empirical evidence that we have so far. Finally, we want to also touch on the concept of strong form efficiency. Remember that this form of market efficiency assumes that the stock price reflects all information, whether or not public and private. Um, the empirical evidence is very strong that the market is not strong efficient. So what that means is that if you do have proprietary or private information, you will be able to make an abnormal return using those proprietary, proprietary information. However, there's a very important caveat. It is illegal to trade stocks based on insider information. In fact, um, many people, um, some of them are quite famous, have gone to jail uh, and be indicted uh, because they make abnormal profit by trading on private information. So, and the law there is is um, is very strong and very strict. So anybody who has a responsibility, who is either an employee or, for example, an accountant or a lawyer for a law firm that have access to private information and has a fiduciary responsibility, they cannot trade on those insider information. So it is, it is very difficult to make money legally without the risk of going to jail um, based on private information. So how do academic researchers go about testing whether or not a stock market is weak form efficient, semi-strong form efficient, or strong form efficient. For the weak form efficient testing, we already talked about using uh, technical trading rules. So uh, those studies tend to look at different trading rules and see if we can earn abnormal return based on trading rules after taking into account transaction cost. Um, and most of those find that once you take transaction costs into consideration, um, there are, they cannot find any trading rules that can generate abnormal return. For testing semi-strong form efficiency, there are two ways to go about um, testing the hypothesis. One is a very direct approach because the semi-strong form efficiency um, par um, assumption is that stock price only reflect to information that is newly released to the public. So we can t test that hypothesis directly by looking at how does stock price react to new information that is released to the public. So let's assume that there is a event, let's say a company is announcing earnings and nobody from the outside of the company uh, know what the new earning will be and the announcement day is day zero. If the market is efficient, we'll expect that the price of the stock will, per, will fluctuate around the current price and then assuming that this is a good news, earnings is higher than expected, we'll expect the price to jump right away to the new level which reflects the new future prospect of the firm given the new earning announcement. And then we'll stay at that new level. So this is the efficient market reaction. The price change adjusts instantaneously to reflect the new information that is available. There are two possible um, alternative reactions. One is overreaction and correction. So if you look at the stock price, you saw that the stock price is relatively stable. And then on announcement day, this is good news. So not surprisingly, you saw that the price go up. But you notice that the price go up and then it subsequently go back down. 
So the conclusion that researchers have when they see this observation and assuming that there's no other news during this period is that the market overreact and then correct later on. So that in that case, it will not be consistent with the assumption that the market is semi -form, strong form efficient. Uh, a third alternative is that the, the stock price continue and then when the announcement occur, the stock reacts, but it doesn't react right uh, fully within the same day, but slowly over a number of days. Uh, again, the delay, in, this is the delay reaction, the delay then tells us that the market is not fully semi-strong form efficient because it takes a long time for the market to incorporate that, um, that information. So by setting up experiments like this, looking at what happened to stock prices um, for a large number of companies surrounding the announcement, again, we want to control for the fact that there's no other event happening here, that there's no news, no other news. Um, how does the stock price react? And the evidence so far has been mixed. So all these experiments focuses on price change. The reason for that is because when markets are efficient, the change in prices should be random. Um, the reason they're random is because we cannot predict the prices. So this is a this is a tautology. This is a definition. By definition, we cannot predict the future because if we know, even if we know what may happen, the possibility of those uh, possible events will have it will have already been priced into the market. So if people think that, so we talk about earnings, is the surprises from the earning that will change the price of the stock. So let's say um, the, the consensus from analysts is that the company will generate uh, $2 per share in earnings. If the company comes in and actually reported earnings of $2 per share, we would not expect the price of the stock to change because there's, the expectation is already built into the current price. But if the company comes in and report $2.50 in earnings, when the consensus of analysts is that the stock will have will generate $2 in earnings, then additional $0.50 cents is a surprise and the market should react to that. So in an efficient market, we'll expect that um, trading will happen um, and as, especially when surprises occur and by by trading so a lot of uh, uh, investors may see that oh the company is reporting 250 instead of two dollars this is a the they would revise their expectation about the future of the company and they will they will buy the stocks and that is a trade and as an investor buy the stock they'll push up the price because there's higher demand and the price will increase reflecting that new information so efficient market is very important. So now we're going to take a look at, so what makes market efficient? So we already said that uh, efficient market is important both because it, um, it enables investors to earn a fair return. It also makes it easier for companies to raise money to invest in valuable projects. So one of the most important things that makes a market efficient is a fairly regulated market. So regulation is actually important for a market to be efficient. So in order for the market to be to do its job, regulation is actually important. The second is accessibility. So a market a financial market should be accessible to a large number of investors. And it's also important that there are many investors out there doing research. So if there's nobody doing research, then even if there's new information, investors will not know how to evaluate that. So this is one of the chicken and egg um, um, paradox in efficient market hypothesis. So if no investor does research, then the market will not be, be efficient. On the other hand, if the market is efficient, then there's no payoff to investors to do additional research. And that is why more and more of the um, semi-strong form efficiency study has concluded that there is some payoff to the professional investors when they were able to process publicly available information very efficiently and very fast. So um, there are actually more and more tools out there available to professional investors to process not just financial data, but um, 
news as well. So textual analysis, sentiments analysis, um, even um, analyst phone call or conference call analysis. There are a lot of new tools. Some some uh, some analysts will examine the body language of the CEO when they deliver their conference call with analysts. Um, and there are um, new analytical tools that can automatically read news articles and then assign sentiments to the articles to see whether or not they are positive or negative sentiments. So investors are continue to do research to enable that the market is efficient. So again, um, the difference there is between professional investors, professional money managers versus private investors and the tools and resources that's available to private investors versus professional money managers. The gap has become bigger and bigger. It is still valuable and profitable for professional money managers to, to invest in researching stocks, but the payoff is less and less for individual investors. To conclude, I just want to summarize some of the very common misconceptions about efficient market hypothesis. So the efficient market hypothesis does not mean that you cannot make money in an efficient market. What they mean is that on average, you will be able to earn returns by investing in the stock market that is consistent with the risk of the stock. Uh, market efficiency will not protect you from making wrong choices if you don't diversify. And we're going to talk about diversification in the next module. So use common sense. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. And also, uh, efficient market does not mean that um, all prayers are fair. So there are still nefarious prayers out there. If something is too good to be true, the adage is, it probably is. So if a market is efficient, something seems too, too good to be true, there's a good chance that something illegal or some lies may be, um, th there may be misrepresentation. We'll conclude this chapter here uh, and we'll continue uh, uh, about how to, how do these concepts of market efficiency and risk and return trade-off, um, how do they inform the, uh, the current um, foundations of modern day finance.